At Marlins Park in Miami, Pix 11 Sports presents New York Mets baseball tonight. The Mets play the Miami Marlins. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Hyundai. Visit the Hyundai Labor Day sales event for incredible deals on the 2015 Hyundai Sonata. By Verizon Fios, now there's a totally new way to customize your TV only from Verizon Fios. By the Acura, it's that kind of summer event. By Chase, so you can easily master the way you bank. By Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. And by the all-new Volkswagen Golf Sports Wagon, isn't it time for German engineering? And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Miami. I'm Gary Cohen. Keith Hernandez joins me in just a moment. The Mets play the middle game of their series against the Marlins. Yesterday, as you probably know, Matt Harvey's agent, Scott Boris, revealed that the doctor who did Matt's surgery, James Andrews, was putting a hard 180-inning cap on Matt's season. For the first time today, Harvey addressed the media about the situation, and Matt was a little bit vague, but he backed up both Boris and Andrews, said they had his best interests at heart, did not say what he had been saying for seven months, months that he wants to pitch for the Mets in the postseason in October and would only commit to making his next start Tuesday night against Washington all of which left the impression that Matt is considering respecting that hard 180 inning cap which basically would give him two more starts before he would be shut down for the season so here you've got a situation uh, Keith where uh, the Mets have to deal with this issue you said yesterday where that you thought that within the Mets clubhouse it would not be a distraction do you still feel that way well, a after the uh, interview today with Matt, um, I have to change my mind. I, I, I think it will have an effect. We don't know beyond when he, till he gets to the point of 180 innings. He was, like you said, vague about that. I know that there's always been a separation between the everyday player. I'm talking about the guys that the starting eight that go out there for around 162 games a year, 160, 55, and the starting pitchers who are once every fifth day. There's always been a, a little bit of friction there. Uh, will there be an, under, uh, an undermining factor in the clubhouse if, in fact, Matt shuts down? I don't know, but the possibility is real, and it is very unfortunate that it's happening right now. Now, there are a lot of elements to this that we do not have all the information about, but the bottom line on all this is the underlying tension that always exists in professional sports, professional team sports, between the interest of the individual, which is to have a long career and make as much money as possible, and the interest of the team, which is to win championships. So as a player, how do you balance those two elements? It's a tough question, Gary, and it's each individual deals with it. Everybody's different. You can't tell me that Matt Harvey is this selfish guy thinking of himself, is not thinking in terms of how is this going to affect my teammates. I know, in fact, that he would he would want to be out there, and I know it's weighs it's weighing heavily on his mind. He's getting advice from doctors. He's getting pulled at both ends. So, like I said, we can only speculate right now. It's going to be very interesting uh, when he gets to his hard 180 innings. And in fact, there's late word that. Harvey's asked his agent Scott Boris to talk to Dr. Andrews to see if there's a way that they can let him pitch and continue to pitch as far as the Mets season goes. We'll have much more about that as the broadcast continues. We'll talk about tonight's game between the Mets and the Marlins when we come back to Marlins Park.
by Dunkin Donuts. So America runs on Dunkin. You can place a deposit on your 2016 full or partial ticket plan today and guarantee yourself access to 2015 Mets postseason tickets. Purchase tickets online at Mets.com slash deposits. Bartolo Colon makes the start for the Mets tonight. 16 consecutive scoreless innings under his belt. Well, the second half of the season for Bartolo has been kind of win-loss, good start, bad start, but he's got two back-to-back in the middle scrunched in there. He got a relief inning in, but his last two starts, he hasn't given up a run. It's a big game tonight for the Mets for him to pitch a big one. He is the hottest Mets starter right now, and that takes us to the themes of the game brought to you by the Hyundai Labor Day sales event. Well, the 16 scoreless innings labor of love. How about Cespedes? Has he just been phenomenal? Unbelievable. What a pickup. And the day off, well, the bullpen struggled. Clifford and Familia are the guys. The other ones are in struggle mode. Let's try it. even up the series with the Marlins after taking an 11-inning loss last night. Mets and Marlins first pitch coming right up. The lefty on the mound, all right-hand hitters, including Eric Campbell making his first start for the Mets since July 31st, and Eric Young making his first start for the Mets since last year. And Brad Hand, we've seen a lot of him over the years. He got his initial call-up back in 2011. He's just been inserted in the rotation. He's been real tough on left-handers of late. He's a hit or miss. That's why we got the Mets have the right-handed lineup in there today. And the Marlins defense is brought to you by all-new Volkswagen Golf Sports Wagon. And we're at the infield. I'm a little slow today, folks. Prado, Rojas, Gordon, and Bohr. And Rio Muto behind the plate. Juan Lagares will lead things off against Brad Hand. Lagares had a hit off the bench last night. Getting his first start since Sunday against the Red Sox. Hands first pitches outside and low and we're underway. Lagares, Wright, and Cespedes in the opening inning for the Mets. Who banged out 12 hits last night but lost 6-5 and 11 after coming back twice. It's the odd nature of how seasons progress. For the first four months of the season, the Mets were dominated by their pitching and struggled to provide enough offense. Over the last month the Mets pitching has struggled and they provided plenty of offense. A call strike to Lagares two and one. That's not the Mets got Mets got out hit 17 to 12 in that 11 inning loss. Jacob McGrom had an up and down start the bullpen struggled. Brad Hand making his 10th start he's also made 24 relief outings. Joined the rotation for good in early August. Lagares chops one. And the shortstop Rojas makes the play in the dirt, but Moore is able to dig it out for the first out of the night. 
Well, Echeverria a second out of the lineup again. Really fine fielding shortstop to go along with D. Gordon at second base. I think the best middle infield in the National League. Here's David Wright, who had a rough night last night, went 0 for 5 and left six runners on base. David playing his 10th game since coming off the disabled list. The plan initially for this series was for David to play last night and tonight and get tomorrow off, but with all the people who are hurting right now, and we're talking about Michael Kadire and Daniel Murphy, and Lucas Dude is not going to be back for at least another few days. Terry Collins says he doesn't know yet whether he'll give David the day off tomorrow. Down the right field side foul. Well, you're talking about Brad Hand being a slinger here. He's kind of a short armor. He kind of goes down and then kind of gets it close to the ear like a catcher. A very unusual speeded up delivery. Probably deceptive for the hitter. Still just 25 years old. He came to the big leagues at a very young age. He got to a terrible start. Mm -hmm. Well, you think about a guy like Ken. Lefties tend to develop slower than right handers anyway. And then you get a guy who's from Minnesota. So he had a very short season as a kid. Those guys tend to develop later. So when you look at a guy like Ken, you think, well, maybe as he gets into his later 20s, he'll keep getting better. One two to right and it's hit hard base hit for David his first hit in the series. Dietrich comes over to play and Wright will settle for a one out single. Well that gets David who had a tough night last night left a ton of men on base. And David's always been deaf to left hand pitching. Getting 400 against lefties in his curtailed season so far. And this man stepping up to the plate has been death for pretty much any side in any pitcher last night you and assess but is it is 100th career home run is 29th this year and is 11th in just 31 games as a met see the spacious ballpark here we're talking about hands delivery Pretty upright, not big leg kick, but he comes down and then he just kind of it looks different from I think from the hitter's point of view. He's just a very unusual, a lot of effort into every pitch. This is reaching for the outside fastball and it's one on one. Ioannis says homered in each of his last three games. In fact, he's the first met this season to homer in three straight games. That triple he hit last night, folks, into right uh, center field, more towards center. Talk about Speedy Gonzalez around the bases. Oh, was he flying? And he just he cuts corners so sharp. Such a good base runner, all around player. Breaking ball in the dirt, two and one. Well, both his homer and his triple last night were hit to right center, and we've seen just how much power he has to that part of the ball. He part. is a guy that when he needs to use right center field, and when he does, he's on and he's not a ballpark in the league, including this one, obviously, hit one last night that can hold him. Good assessment is with Juan Arribe on deck. He's got the, uh, the canary yellow on today, Gary. See, now he switched up last night, went to the orange. He had orange and red. Yeah. He had two tone. And, you know, he had a home run and a triple. You wouldn't figure he no, would but jump it a, that. No, didn't have a W. Switch gears. Okay. Team first. I guess that's what we were talking about. <laughs> two two coming, and he fouls back the fastball. Uh, here's the home run and just ripped. Every day he does something to impress. And that was with the Mets down a run in the seventh with a man on it gave the Mets a lead. That was late in the ball game too. Phil. It was the seventh inning and the Mets were kind of trudging along and needed a spark. Boy what a pickup. This is one of the finest hitters I've seen come down the road in a while. And hand misses inside. Full count. Now we showed you the odd Mets lineup tonight with all right hand hitters and if you're wondering why 
hand this year has allowed just a 223 average against left hand hitters and even better lately over his last 11 appearances the lefties are hitting 146 so you can understand why Terry stocked his lineup with right hand hitters tonight right runs and the pitch is low ball four and the Mets have two men on so a single and a walk set the table and want a rebate coming up well, walks have always been an issue with Brad hand and the same this year for him his walks are too high. So Rebe one for six last night, playing second base for the second straight night. Right at second, Cespedes at first and one out. Rebe's done his best work against left hand pitching this year, hitting 278 with six of his 13 home runs against lefties. He takes a strike. Last Diaz calling the balls and strikes tonight. Juan had a big hit late in the ball game. He had a tough time off Kohler, who was pretty sharp. Kohler came in with seven straight losses and seven straight starts and really pitched a pretty good ball game. Rebe was in the middle of the three straight hits for the Mets in the ninth that tied the game. And he chases the pitch away. Nothing at two. Chase a little fastball. He throws a little sinker, a hard little sink. Travis Darno on deck. 0 oh 2 to a Rebe. And Juan goes down swinging on the off speed pitch and hand as his first strikeout. So two out of the inning. And it's left to Darno, who has just been raking. <laughs> he was on base four more times last night with two singles and two walks. Talk to him about his adjustment he made and how he holds his hands uh, in the dugout the day before the game. And he said he brought his hands back, so. He's more in a set position to hit, and he always loves to hold that bat curled around his head. You'll notice how he likes to angle that bat forward. It seems like it would take so long to get the bat from there into the hitting zone, but we've oh. seen other guys be successful doing that. Right. Now, when he held the adjustment he made, now if you look at his body, he held his hands right in between the W and the Y in New York. Then he had to come back with it. Now you'll see his hands as he gets set. They're back on his right shoulder. And more in a hitting position. And he said he worked with it. it was a suggestion from Kevin Long. And he's been raking. He can hit. I, you know, I liked him the minute I saw him. See, when I see a hitter like Darno pointing the bat at the pitcher like that, wrapping his hand, I think of Gary Sheffield. Right. And Julio Franco. Julio Franco was big time. And Darn really working at a deliberate, deliberate pace here in the first. Inning. Darnell's got 31 RBIs in 44 games. Yeah. He's hitting 393 against lefties this year. And he uh, takes it outside. He's not so. One. He's not so extreme with the bat angle, the angle of the bat over the top of his head. He's taking it more straight up and down. Usually he's got it wrapped over the top of his head for the bat at the end of the bat over his left shoulder if you believe that. But now look at not so extreme. It's a little bit right before he yep. it's, everybody, the pitch. You can't cookie cutter hitters, you know? Everybody has that the, the, they've hit one way, they've got to the big leagues with success hitting. You don't want it. You, it's hard to change someone it's a, with life habits. There's only minor tinkering that you do with it, not major. Unless you're a 210 hitter, then you got you know you got to try something. Three and one count to Darno with Wilmer Flores on deck. Two on and two out. And Darno hits one to center field, hit well, racing back is Yelich, looking up at the wall. It's out of here. Travis Darno with a three-run homer to get the Mets off to a fast start. Number 10 for Darno. 
Wow. There is nothing short about center field in this ballpark. This is a rocket. This is the kind of power that Darno has. Not a big guy. Crushed. And much needed. Ten home runs, 34 RBIs, and just 163 at bats for Darno. Flores follows with a long drive to left center. Back in the gap, Dietrich near the wall, and that's gone! Back-to-back -back home runs on consecutive pitches, Darno and Flores, and it's 4-0 New York. Number 15 for Walter Flores. The Mets off to a crushing start in Miami. That's what I like to see how a team responds off a tough loss in a stretch run. Oh, baby, nicely done, both you boys. First runs of the game brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. Mets sitting back to back home runs against Brad Hand, who in 81 innings this year had allowed only four home runs. But the Mets put a hurting on him in a hurry. Consecutive pitches leave the yard. Darno a three run shot. Flores with a following home run. And the Mets putting up a four spot in the opening inning. Eighth time this year the Mets have hit back to back home runs. Now Eric Campbell getting the start at first base tonight against the lefty. Well, we talked about Terry Collins stacking his lineup with right hand batters against Brad Hand, who's been so hard on left hand hitters, it pays off. In the very first inning. For Campbell, his first start since returning from the minor leagues as a September call up. His last start for the Mets came July the 31st against the Nats. That'll get smiles on your face. Why not? Energize this team. There's a strike two and one. Now you hand it off. The inning's not over, but you hand it off to Colon, the veteran. To throw a good ball game here and marshal this team to a victory. Campbell hits one up the middle and that keeps the inning alive. Well, Campbell now two for two since returning as a September call up. Now the Mets have their fourth hit of this opening inning. So there's Campbell's rip up the middle, sinker ball pitcher, beautifully done. Don't try to pull him. Terry Collins looking like a genius. Well, we've reiterated this many times when the Mets started to upgrade their offense July 25th. They've gone from the worst offensive team in the National League to the best. Now Eric Young getting his first start this season for the Mets. Returned in a minor league deal this summer. Called up when the roster's expanded. He's had one at bat since being back. And finally threw a breaking ball. That fastball's getting ripped. I had to change the change uh, battle plan here. There goes Campbell. The throw by Real Muto on a hop, and Campbell's out. Tag made by Gordon to end the inning. Two to four on the caught stealing. What a very productive first inning. The Mets hand it to Brad Hand. Darno and Flores go back to back. And the Mets hand Bartolo Colon a 4 0 lead as he takes them out.
but otherwise the same unit. Still no Giancarlo Stanton with the bad wrist. Still no Adani Echevarria with the bad hamstring. And that's the lineup Bartolo Colon will put his 16 inning scoreless streak on the line against. Well, there's Bart's numbers. And think about it, folks. 27 wins in not quite two seasons. What a nice pickup by Sandy Alderson. D. Gordon leads off one for six last night. And he takes outside ball one. Oh, takes a strike. Excuse me, Laz Diaz. I misjudged Laz's right hand. <laughs> Gordon's got 165 hits this year. That leads the National League. And he's got 23 of them against the Mets. He's hitting 383 against Mets pitching this year. And he takes one the other way. A uh, hesitant start by Cespedes, but he reaches down to make the grab. I don't know if he didn't see it or if it fooled him. It did. It fooled him. And he's just such an athlete that he's able to recover a stutter step, Gary, and then come in. He's got such good hands. Late nice reactions, but it still worked. Nice well. recovery. He's, he's just a, an athlete. He's a player. You know, and it's always special for a young Cuban player to come here to Miami, get so much attention oh. away from the field with the huge Cuban community here. And he put on a show for them last night. Here's Christian Yelich, who had a real good game last night for the Marlins. Two for six, including scoring the game winning run in the 11th. He flies one down the left field line over toward the corner. Cespedes on the run, and it lands foul. And we'll take a quick look at the defense. The New York Metropolitan defense. Your Mets. First place Mets. Brought to you by all new Volkswagen Golf Sports Wagon. Cespedes in left today. Lagares back in the lineup. Eric Young out in right. Flores back from Venezuela. He's at shortstop. Campbell at first. Lots of changes in the lineup today. That was good, Keith. I tried. <laughs> Yelich slaps one to short, and Flores is right there to play it. The stretch by Campbell to get the out two away. Well, the first three hitters in this lineup, and I've seen one game. You got D. Gordon, Yelich, and Prado. They all are hitters that are line drive hitters that use the field. You've got to play these guys straight up. Well, Prado certainly used the field last night, went line to line for a five hit game, the first of his career, including the game winner, a double in the bottom of the 11th that put the Marlins over the top. Cologne handed a 4 run first inning lead. He's retired the first two and pours over a fastball first strike. Bartolo, like we said, 16 scoreless innings, two straight terrific starts. By the way, the longest scoreless inning streak of Bart's career came back in 2012, 22 and a third. So, uh, good outing tonight. He's got a chance to break that mark. Bartolo six and three lifetime against the Marlins in nine starts. So those are the last two starts. But remember, in between that, he threw the, uh, the one inning relief one inning out of the bullpen against the Red Sox, and that's what made that that last start against the Phillies even more phenomenal. But he was able to go eight. Prado flies one to shallow center, and Lagares is right there. One two three inning for Cologne after one in Miami. That's four. Marlins nothing.
Baseball is brought to you by Tom Warner Cable. Enjoy more shows on more screens. Tom Warner Cable. Enjoy better. I'm always fascinated by pelicans. How do they fit those big fish down their throats? Well, they got the big gullet. Very impressive species. Everybody has a purpose in life. Pelicans, flamingos, moss. Way, way to survive. <laughs> Eric Young was at the plate when Eric Campbell was caught stealing to end the first, so he gets a fresh turn at bat. And takes low and away from Brad Hand. Mets put up four runs on four hits in the first inning. Home runs by Darno and Flores on consecutive pitches. Putting an early crimp in Brad Hand's night. Young at the plate, Cologne on deck, and then Lagares. Hand falls behind 2 0. Meanwhile, the suddenly hot Washington Nationals, who've taken the first two of their series with Atlanta, are scoreless in the third inning tonight in D.C. Hey. A strike. That's Shelby Miller for the Braves, right? Shelby My Miller goodness. has done 19 straight starts without a win. So that's good. He's due. He's got a 2.56 ERA for the year, but they just can't get him a win. Gio Gonzalez tonight for the Nats. And EY trying to bunt, leans into it and gets hit by the pitch. Now, would you make an argument if you were the Marlins that he made no effort to get out of the way? No. Because he did, I think. He was coming trying to drag bunt, push the bunt up the first baseline. He's trying to get out of the way. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> he was barely in the batter's box, but he was. He's so got a he speech to run by a pitch. Would you. Give well, you got hand the left hander. How familiar are you with hands move to first base? Well, he wise faced him before, but you got Cologne up there to bunt. Well, my feeling is this give EY a, a, a strike to steal, and then maybe bunt him to third. Too late now. Too late now is right. Should have said it soon. It's tough for the left hander. <laughs> Cologne has seven hits this year, but only two sacrifice bunts. Seven hits are a career high for Bart. Well, Terry Collins in this configuring this lineup today of all right handers said the only left hander he really considered in the lineup was uh, Kelly Johnson. He said he just opted. With hands hot hand against left handers. It's no pun. Uh, he'd opted for an all right handed lineup. Makes sense. And he's got pr plenty of left handed bats on the bench if he needs to switch off against Marlins bullpen. Hopeful, he said, for a quick lead, a big lead, or he can sub in when they get, if they knock hand out, you know, sub in his right handed bats. Well, that quick lead worked out just the way he hoped. He needs more. Cologne fouls off the bunt strike three. There's the second strikeout for him. And he uh, saved the ball as a souvenir. I've never seen that before. Oh. That okay. strikes out and he takes the ball with him. I've never seen that. If you strike me out, I'm going to take my ball and go home. Now is he going to toss it up and down like he always does? I don't know. <laughs> Certainly is entertaining though. So now Young at first and one out. We'll see whether EY has a notion to go with Juan Lagares at the plate. Hands pretty quick home. Gary he doesn't have a big leg kick. We noted that on his windup. Same thing with his stretch, and he's quick with his arm. You could hit and run with Mr. Lagares. He goes that way naturally. Lagares bounced out to short his first time up. Hits one out to right field, hit pretty well. Suzuki back to the warning track at the wall. It's out of here. Juan Lagares with an opposite field two run homer. The Mets' third home run of the first two innings. Number six for Lagares, and it's 6 0 New York. Looks nothing short of brilliant. Einstein, look at this. 
I didn't think this ball was getting out here. And then not until Suzuki pulled up. Made it to the front row. It's all it took. Oh, you got six runs on the board now. This is just what the doctor ordered a team yesterday that took a while to get the engine running offensively. Not tonight. Brad Hand had allowed four home runs this season. He's allowed three through the first 10 batters he's faced tonight. Well, I asked you at the outset tonight whether the Matt Harvey news would create a distraction. Clearly not so far. <laughs> it's, you know what? Con take control of your own destiny, right, Gary? Andre Rienzo up early in the Marlins bullpen. Wright smacks one out to right field, but Ichiro is there and makes the catch for the second out. So two out and nobody on for Cespedes. Walked and scored in front of Darno's home run in the first inning. Cespedes after his performance last night now has 68 extra base hits for the season. If he had played his entire year in the National League that would put him third in the league only Nolan Arenado and Todd Frazier have more extra base hits than Cespedes is 68. Furthermore, he's now scored 87 runs this year. Yes. I only look in terms of Gary, what he's done for the Mets. The heck with Detroit. It's what he's done here. And he's been extraordinary. He lines that one to the left and he's got himself a base hit. It's very parochial of you, know. <laughs> so that's been a side base for the second time tonight. And the Mets have their sixth hit against him. He is just you, you out over the plate and down. It's like uh, you're a masoch you're a masochist. Just he'll beat he'll beat you to death. Thirty one games now for Cespedes. Thirty two games. This game's not over. Twenty eight RBI. Eleven home runs. Twenty five runs. Been very productive to here's say the a, least. Here's a rebate who struck out his first time and hand keeps it away from him. Mets chat going. Not as sizable a contingent of Mets fans as we've seen in, in some road games lately, but they're making their presence felt. With the new stadiums now, the new dugouts. Everybody's got to sit in the top step to watch the game. I wouldn't like that. Now three and to a rebay with Darno on deck, especially on day games. That sun will beat on you. Well, you can always sit in the back. Well, then you get your view gets blocked. Because when you played, there were no fences in the front. You're right. You to pay, that might have been a good thing because you had to pay attention. Right. That didn't start until the uh, until the 90s, putting fences in front of dugouts. And that's inside ball four. So a rebay walks on four pitches. And once again, there will be two men aboard for Mr. Darno. He took advantage of having two men on his first time up tonight in a rather spectacular way. How much longer will Brad Hand last in this game? The answer is no longer. No. Right no. bring in the right hander, Andre Rienzo, to face Travis Darno. So Hand will get an early shower after an inning and two thirds, having given up six runs. Three home runs. He got rock. So an early call to the bullpen for the Marlins. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Acura. It's that kind of summer event. Hand out. Rienzo in. We'll be right back.
not the shortest outing of the year for Brad Hand. He lasted just two thirds of an inning in Toronto in June. But he's out and the Brazilian Andre Rienzo is in to pitch for the Marlins. Well, opted for baseball instead of soccer. How about that? He's been up and down, acquired from the White Sox. You see eight ball games. He's been on the DL a couple times, been up and down. Tarno lines where the left field. That's down for a base hit. Cespedes in to score. Darno already with four RBIs in the first two innings, and the Mets stretch their lead to seven nothing. Darno so quick inside. That was a decent sinker. This young man can hit. Boom! That is good hitting. Cespedes always gets great reach. You'll never see him. Uncertain whether the line drive is going to be caught, like we see so many players in this league. There's two outs, though, in that one, but he's got great judgment on the bases. Now, Flores, who homered his first time up. So the Mets with four in the first, and with three runs up in the second. This is just what they, the Mets needed. Rienzo making just his ninth appearance of the season. One of only three Brazilians ever to play in the major leagues. The catcher Jan Gomes with Cleveland, Paulo Orlando with Kansas City. Rienzo, the only pitcher. And we'll make it into the seats out of play. Not a lot of foul territory in this ballpark. Hitter friendly. If Rienzo had opted for soccer, yes. He wouldn't be Andre Rienzo, he'd just be Rienzo. You follow Rienzo. Well, all those Brazilian players, they have one name. Oh, I Pelé. Oh. You've heard of him. Of course they have. Ronaldo. Cosmos. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was one name. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Nationals got a run on the bottom of the third off Shelby Miller. One nothing Nats. They're still batting in the bottom of the third. So Miller is on the short end again. Flores pops one up in the shallow center. Yelich coming on. That retires the side, but the Mets tack on three. Off to quite a start tonight. Three home runs in the first two innings. Juan Lagares, the latest, goes the other way for his sixth of the year. Mets lead 7 0 in the second. Cologne fortified with a seven run lead. He retired the side in order in the first on just nine pitches. He'll take on Justin Bohr to start the home second. Bohr one for five last night. 
be more than Dietrich and then Ichiro Suzuki for the Marlins, who have won four in a row, just one shy of their season high winning streak. They swept three from the Braves. Good changeup by Cologne, one and one. Yeah, Bohr showed last night that he had a real hard time with the off speed pitches off from the uh, ground. So Bartolo, very observant. This is the one bat that you got to be careful. He can lose it. Power hitter. But he can be pitched too. Anthony Rendon just singled in a run and the Nats lead 2 0 in the third. One two to Bohr. The Braves are just going through a stretch right now that is just abysmal. They've lost 10 in a row, 17 of their last 18, their worst stretch in 30 years. And they're not just getting beat, they're they're getting pounded. Now last night they pitched pretty well, but the Nats tied it in the ninth and won it in the tenth. Huge foul. Second straight day, the Nats picked up ground on the Mets to get within five. They won on Thursday while the Mets were off, and then won last night as the Mets lost here. And Bohr lines one to center. Lagaris will play it on a hop. And Bohr is the first base runner of the night for the Marlins. So a leadoff base runner Derek Dietrich coming up and we check in with Steve Gelb Steve Gary you guys were talking last night about the possibility and the likelihood perhaps that they move in the fences here next year at Marlins Park tonight obviously the Mets don't seem to be having too many issues with it but that is something that the Mets know a lot about having moved in the fences this year at City Field it's working out really well for them 17 more home runs at home this year than they hit all of last season. But David Wright said something interesting at the beginning of the year that Kevin Long reiterated today about why it is so important to move in the fences when they become an issue mentally with the team. He said it's not so much about just the extra few feet here and there, but sometimes, especially early on in the season or early on in a game, if you hit the ball really hard and it dies in the outfield, all of a sudden you feel like you have to give a little something extra the rest of the time you're up at bat, the rest of the times you're up at bat, and that can get you out of the correct approach and can negatively impact you not just at home but for the remainder of the season on the road as well. Well. Cespedes so is ranging back. And pulls in Dietrich's fly ball. I, I can speak to that Steve having played at Bush Stadium first half of my career which was Death Valley. The best way to correct that is to hit line drives. Not try to hit home runs. But what like if you're gaps in the like doubles in the gap? But what if you're a guy who has been nurtured to hit home runs? Can you see how that would have a negative? I don't impact? think that's an effect. I think the players today want to hit home runs, and I think organizationally, I think front offices want home runs, and I and I think it's a, a big mistake. Not everybody can be a home run hitter. You've got to have table setters in your lineup. Uh, the game really hasn't changed. Although they try to, ch to change it, it's the same. You need table setters. Your third hitter is got to be your your line drive hitter. McCutcheon is a classic third hitter for the Pirates. Line drive hitter, hits 20 home runs. Okay, I don't. Uh, but then you got your power slots in the four, five, and six. Not everybody can be a long ball hitter. If you're hitting fly balls and they're dying out there. You can't hammer. You can't hammer a circle into a square here. I mean, come on, make an adjustment. Hit line drives. Very simple. This guy knows all about that. Closing it on 3,000 hits in his career. Ichiro Suzuki has 29 of those hits against Bartolo Colon. That's more than he has. Than uh, Colon's given up to any other batter. Behind him, three and one, and he pulls one just foul. Three and two. They needed that last night, the Mets, didn't they? Hmm. Off the bat of Prado, that double down the line in the eleventh that beat the Mets. JJ 
see Real Muto on there. Rounded to first. Campbell gets the out at first. And the tag on Bohr for the double play. 3-3-6 three, three, to end the inning. Nicely handled by Campbell, making just his second start at first base this year. Seven nothing Mets after two. His 18th win today, eight scoreless innings, no walks, seven strikeouts wow. as the Cubs beat the Diamondbacks. The uh, Blue Jays got a great pitching performance from David Price, who got his 100th career win as they beat Baltimore 5 1. And uh, they extend their lead to a game and a half over the Yankees. And the uh, Cardinals even up their series with the Pirates as Jaime Garcia threw seven scoreless innings. Where's he been? Cardinals just keep throwing. Quality starts every day, no matter who goes out there. without Wainwright. Right. And they didn't have Jaime Garcia for the first half of the year, practically. Eric Campbell had a base at his first time up. Well, with the win today, the Cardinals go back to six and a half in front of the Pirates. Cubs won today, so the Cubs are within three of the Pirates for that first wild card, but it. It's pretty rock solid for those two teams being the wild cards because the Giants have fallen off a cliff. Yes. Losing seven in a row after being beaten by the Rockies last night. Every other year with them, Gary. You see what Arenado and Carlos Gonzalez are doing right Ooh, now? That one hits Campbell on the hand. Did he swing? They say no swing, and so he'll go to first base, provided that he's okay. Dan Jennings is out of the Marlins dugout to ask Las Diaz. To ask for help. Does Campbell know he's been given first base? Yeah, I think he's concerned about his hand. Oh, got the. Uh, oh, it's the worst spot to get hit, Gary. It's right on the wrist joint where your ulna attaches. Little. Oh, oh, he got him more in the fingers, didn't he? That still hurts. He'll be okay. It's down to first base. Second Met hitter to be hit by a pitch in this game. Eric Young was hit his first time up, and Jennings is out again to ask Laz Diaz. And Diaz says, I already asked for help, and he did. Good, he Laz. Asked Chris Guccione for help, and Guccione said, No swing. Very good, Laz. Of course, if you get hit by a pitch and you swing, it's not a hit by pitch, it's merely a strike. Correct. So, the leadoff base runner for the Mets, here's Young, who was hit by a pitch while trying to bunt and scored a run in the second.
Uruguay flies one out to left. And Dietrich snags it. One out. Well, let's see if Bartolo can put a bunt down this time. There's never a lead big enough. Not at this stage of the season. You've got a pitcher up there, you keep one of them. Pile it on. Bartolo struck out, tried to bunt his first time up. Kind of hit a little speed bump there, and he's had a little trouble. He's been stuck he's on had a 15. Couple, a couple of tough starts. Yeah, stuck on 15 for a while. There you go. Mark gets that one down. Rienzo's throw goes to first. So Cologne has his third sacrifice of the year. Goes one four. Follow the Mets wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat, it's up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. So here's Lagaris who went the other way and dropped a two-run homer over the right field fence. That was against Brad Hand in the second. And lasted just an inning and two thirds, gave up seven runs, six hits, three home runs. And Rienzo came on to get the last out of the second. Makes the play, throws out Lagares to end the inning. Middle of the third, 7 0 New York. You got your bread, you got your ham, your pickles, your roast pork, your Swiss cheese, a little mustard, press it, get all toasty. Great and, delicacy. And if you don't come to Miami and have a Cuban sandwich, what will they do to you? I don't know. I just think it's, you know, part of the cultural experience of coming here to Miami. Like going to New York and not having a pastrami sandwich. Philadelphia cheese steak. Exactly. The chili in Cincinnati. Well, that's a whole different story. <laughs> There's a limit. 
J.T. Real Muto leading off in the home third. And he grounds one through the hole. So Real Muto has his second hit of the series. Leading off in the home third. That's upcoming schedule brought to you by your Tri Honda dealer. That's up one more game here in Miami tomorrow. And then the big series in Washington starts Labor Day afternoon. Three games in D.C. and then the Mets go to Atlanta for four before returning home. Here's Miguel Rojas, the number eight hitter. Rojas filling in at shortstop for the injured to Danny Echevarria. Out for a second straight day with what they're calling a mild hamstring injury. Ball strike to Rojas, the former Dodger. So uh, Bryce Harper tacked on a two run homer at the end of that bottom of the third for Washington is 33rd and so it's a four nothing Washington lead over Atlanta as they play in the fourth. You can't look for help elsewhere. Only take care of the game at hand. Well that's the nice thing about being in first place right you don't need any help. All you have to do is win, win. yourself. Well, there you go. see how the schedules match up the. Uh, Quality of competition about the same. The only difference is the Nats have a few more home games than the Mets. And six with each other. The three coming up in D.C. and then the last three games of the year at City Field. And the Mets have that one interleague series left with the Yankees mm -hmm. at City Field. Little dribbler, Cologne off the mound, and the sidearm toss. Gets Rojas as Real Muto moves to second. Well, Cologne can cover. A little out of. A little. He didn't get set. That's why the throw was kind of in the line. If you throw sidearm, it's always going to run into the, the runner. Thing is, if you hit the runner with that throw, he's going to be out because he's not running in the lane. He's running several feet to the uh, fair side of that running lane. Always thought it was a great idea in that position for the pitcher to throw the ball right into the runner's back because then the runner at first base has to go back to first on the dead ball. Yes, but it's tough when you're a pitcher and you're a fielder and your back's to the play and you don't see where the runner's positioned and you know you got to field it and get it there. It's tough to make that uh, observation. And of course, you might also not get the call and then you're in all sorts of trouble. Right on the back end on the ground ball by Rienzo. He throws him out. Two out. Oh, David on nice. Got the short hop. Fellow infielders, we love the short hop. So two out and a runner at second for Dean Gordon, who lined out to left in the first inning. What a year D. Gordon's having. I don't understand why the Dodgers let him go. Well, he's right on top of the pack as far as the hit leaders in the National League. Energizing player. Steals bases. Eight triples on the year, 19 doubles. Back to the center, right at Lagares, who barely has to move, and that retires the side. Second straight inning, Cologne's worked around leadoff hit. He's now thrown 19 straight scoreless innings. The phenomenon that is Cologne.
night if you subtract all the uh, pregame hoopla. So far, the uh, home run sculpture has been well, dormant. Yes, it has. The, uh, the Marlins don't hit a lot of home runs these days with Giancarlo Stanton on the sideline for the last two and a half months. I wonder how the fish feel about living behind home plate. It's almost like living in a fishbowl. The best seat in the house. <laughs> Those are right behind home plate, folks, if you're not familiar with the ballpark. And the glass is very thick. The fish are in no danger from foul balls. Andre Rienzo came on in relief in the second inning. That's where the fish are situated. 450 gallon salt water. Aquarium, so they got it's a living aquarium with everything, the coral and everything. It's au natural. Must require a lot of maintenance, I would, I would think so. Right, is one for two tonight, singled and scored back in the first. And he hits one up the middle, another base hit for David Wright. His second hit of the night. And the Mets' eighth hit, their second against Rienzo. Well, it's a good sign. David had a tough night last night. Had an 0 for 5 last night and left men on base all over the place, so it's good to see him rip this one. Now you went to Cespedes, who's already walked and singled and scored twice tonight. He's making a move on 300 for the season. Let's check in with Steve. Well, with each passing day, the Mets coaches seem to be more and more impressed with Yoannis Cespedes, more in awe of what he does. Yesterday, hitting another home run, a monstrous shot to the opposite field. Kevin Long said that until you see him every day, you don't quite understand just how good this guy is. But in Kevin Long's opinion, he's the best low ball hitter he's ever seen. He said it's partially the reason why he gets so much power is because of how he uses his legs to really get down low and explode out, uses that ground as almost a jumping off point. In, in in a way that most guys don't seem to be able to do. In terms of Kevin Long thinking about what he can improve upon, he said the only thing he looks at with Cespedes is just really learning that strike zone a little better. Says if he masters that, it's over. This guy is an MVP candidate. Now, the one interesting fact about what it means to master the strike zones, though, with Yoannis Cespedes versus some other guys, as that one goes out of play. No. No, oh, it's caught. I'm sorry. Right down the line. I couldn't see it right there. But one of the things that's different about Yoannis Cespedes is that he has the green light because he's such a good low ball hitter to hit anything below the strike zone. What they're trying to get at with Cespedes is avoid the pitches above the belt and to the outside on either side of the plate. Well, I would tend to agree. I, 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 he's a low ball hitter. He loves that low ball. He's got to learn for to me to lay off a letter high of fastball, whatever it is, letter high. He tends to chase and up. He's got to bring the strike zone down into his zone. But I still want him being aggressive uh, in the strike zone above the belt. Well, we've seen the teams that have had success against this, but let's get him out with the high fast right. Like climbing the ladder. I don't want him uh, making a little tiny box. In an area where he wants to hit, you look into your strength. That is for sure. I totally understand what Kevin Long is talking about. Rebe went around on the half swing. He didn't think so, but Laz Diaz did. Rebe has been chasing a tad lately, chasing the bad breaking ball. He's such an aggressive hitter. He's prone to letting the hit pitchers expand the strike zone on him. But don't you dare make a mistake. Tonight he has already struck out and walked. So Travis Darno on deck. Travis already has a career high for RBIs tonight with four. One two from Rienzo. Mm. And that's in and out of the middle for Real Muto. And so Rebe stays alive. Hanging slider right there for him. Vicious cut. Oh, Cadillac. Where'd that come from? Subliminal advertising.
you need to run out to the dealership now. <laughs> Breaking ball pulled foul. Seven-year-old Andre Rienzo, spurned soccer for baseball as a teenager. Baseball has been in Brazil since the early part of the 20th century, brought there by Japanese immigrants. Of course, learned it from the Americans, and it was within the Japanese community that Rienzo learned how to play baseball. Multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. Tied up, but took the pitch inside. It's two and two. Eighth pitch of the at bat to a rebay, and he chases one, but fouls it off. Appears this will be not be the night that Shelby Miller snaps his 19 game winless streak. It's now Washington six, Atlanta nothing in the fourth. Yeah. Nothing's going right for Atlanta. They're looking at an 11th straight loss. Of course, the Mets will be in Atlanta for four games next week. That is after that Washington series. Tenth pitch of the at bat to a rebate, and he walked him. It's quite a turn at bat for Juan Arebe, who was behind in the count early. Got a check swing called against him that he disagreed with and wound up working out his second walk of the night. Here comes the hit man. Well, so the table set again for Darno, who's already set a new career high with four RBIs tonight, three run homer, RBI single. What can he do for an encore? He was the first man Rienzo faced when he came out of the second, and he drove on a run with a base hit. Right at second, to Rebe at first and one out. It's looking to tack on to a 7 0 lead. Arno now has seven hits in his last nine at bats. Lifts this one to right center. Over in the gap comes Yelich and Ichiro, and Ichiro makes the catch. Right will tag and go to third. Two out. Get to City Field Saturday night, October 3rd. The Mets play the Nationals. The first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a fleece blanket courtesy of the Northwest Company. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash tickets. There's Romer Flores. He hit a home run back in the first inning, his 15th of the year. Fly down to end the second, so he's one for two. Right at third, a rebate at first with two out. Facing Andre Rienzo, who came on in relief in the second. Ball one to Flores. Up. Nitro angles in. That retires the side. That strand of pair in the fourth. The world's largest bobblehead museum is here in Marlins Park. Oh. And Keith is featured prominently. Right next to Tom Lavin and Paul LaDuca. Hi, Paul.
And you would have Cuban cigars. And they are prominent here in Miami. And those are not rolled by Dominicans. Do they come with the music? Miss my Kramer reference. <laughs> Yelich grounded out to short his first time up. And Cologne for a rare time falls behind two and oh. When what just... of Bartolo Cologne? I mean, this whatever. man has just from the first pitch he threw as a Met, he's become an icon. Lawrence throws out Yelich one away. I mean, he went through a lull in the middle of this season, and he started doing something he had not been doing all year, which is throwing bullpen sessions. He's a guy who normally just goes start to start with some light throwing on the side. But he found that his command was off, started throwing between starts more, regained his command, and now he's as good as he's ever been. So you know what that tells you? It's a man that's striving for perfection and trying, striving to be the best he can be every start. You know, recognizing probably uh, that he's not a spring chicken anymore and maybe getting a little bit gas the second half or maybe I need to ha have a little tune up in between. That's, I, I think that's great. Well there are a couple of other factors at play here too. You know we've been in great conversation tonight and we will be more about guys who may or may not pitch in October. Well Cologne wants to be part of this staff if the Mets get to the postseason and all the conversation over the last several weeks has kind of left him out of that discussion. Figuring, well, he's 42. He can't pitch out of the bullpen. He struggled through the middle of the season. Well, look at him now. 19 straight scoreless innings, and making his case to be a part of that staff as he gets up a base hit to Prado, who had five hits last night, and now his first in this game, a one-out single. And that's what Prado does so well. He goes to the opposite field. And it's too bad he would have fit in 30 years ago, 40 years ago, from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Where the hit and run was prevalent. He would have been perfect, but the hit and run is a lost art. So one out and one on for Justin Bohr. Getting back to Cologne for a moment. The other piece about Bartolo, remember, he's 42 years old, but he's not done. He's pitching for a contract for next year, whether it's with the Mets or, or somebody else. And he's trying to tell the world that yep. he can go out there 42 now be 43 next year and that he can still be a winning pitcher. Nice salary too. A lot of money to be made in this game. Hey he's earned it. To another boy. Well. He's got more postseason experience than. Uh, everybody else. On this Mets team combined. Among the pitchers. That's pulled to the hole, a base hit for Bohr. Prado will pull in at second. So back to back one out hits. Bohr is now two for two. Didn't get it away enough. Did not. Yeah, he got it away. Bohr just went out and reached. Dead pull hitter. <clears throat> so now Derek Dietrich, who fly to left his first time up. Four hits now for the Marlins against Cologne. He gave up just four hits and eight scoreless innings in his last start against the Phillies. And as was the case in that game, same case tonight, he's given up all singles. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Land Rover above and beyond. Two and out of Dietrich with Ichiro Suzuki on deck. And that's ball three. And 
and uh, that's only the second three ball count of the night for Cologne. So he's running into a little hardship here in the fourth, working with a big lead. Otto at second, Bohr at first, and one out. And Dietrich takes a strike. Guys, one to right. Young moving back. Has room on the warning track. Tagging at second. Prado. He'll go to third. But now they're two out. Do a little sinker up there. I'm not going to walk you. I got a seven-run lead. Put it in play. So now it's Ichiro who grounded into a double play his first time up. Was signed to be a backup player. He's made 66 starts this year for the Marlins, probably more than they anticipated. With Yelich getting hurt several times, Ozuna sent to the minor leagues, Stanton on the shelf for two and a half months. So Ichiro Suzuki, at age 41, almost 42, has gotten plenty of time. To the left of the mound, charging his right. Close play. Got him. Side retired. Good scoop by Campbell at the end of the play to get Ichiro and keep the Marlins off the board. Dan Jennings might want to go to a challenge. He's come out of the dugout. Let's see how close it was. Ouch. So it looked like he got him, and Jennings says, I will not challenge. Campbell with a nice pickup. 20 consecutive scoreless innings for Cologne. 7 0 Mets after four. It's a tie. Cologne and Rienzo. 91 apiece. Well, Bart just keeps on rolling. Why not? Smile. 20 straight scoreless innings for the 42 year old wonder. And he'll get a turn and bat here in the fifth. 7 8 and 9 in the order. Eric Campbell leads off. Campbell was hit on the hand by a pitch his last time up. He was in some discomfort, but stayed in the game. Just made that nice scoop on the low throw by David Wright to get the Mets through the last half inning. Campbell's been on base twice tonight with a single and that hit by pitch. Eric Young on deck and then Bartolo Colon in the fifth. Mets scored four in the first, three in the second to knock out Brad Hand. Campbell pulls one down to third and Prado handles the hop. One out. Not 
not only are the Braves down six nothing to the Nationals in the bottom of the fifth, but Gio Gonzalez is not allowed to hit for the first five. Hasn't been a good year for Gio. Here's Eric Young. Let's see, it's Saturday, so the Mets will miss Gio in the series in D.C. We're supposed to see Scherzer, Zimmerman, and Strasburg. Yes. Now they're not certain about Strasburg yet. They think that he's going to make that start. I think he, he was will. supposed to throw a bullpen session today, and then they were supposed to make a call. What's he got? Uh, back issues? Yep. That's go. how they are scheduled to line up. Nice against Scherzer Monday, Harvey against Zimmerman Tuesday, DeGrom and Strasburg Wednesday. Well, all three games are huge. Obviously, I'm stating the obvious. Well, you know, we don't know what the margin is going to be going into that game. <clears throat> Let's say it's what it is now at five games. The games are huger for the Nationals than they are for the Mets. Correct. When you've got the lead, they got to catch you. Slowly hit. Gordon hurries the throw just in time to get the speedy young for the second out. I mean, if you go into Washington and you're the Mets and you're five games up, even if you only win one game, you're still four games up. But if you're the Nationals, you have to think we have to win all three. You want to win two out of three, the Nationals. Still some season left. And if it's five, you get to four. It's a lot of season left. But uh, what you know, the Mets have to avoid a sweep if you're talking negatively. And if you're talking super positive, you sweep you sweep uh, the Nationals. And you bury them. It's adios amigo. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going into my uh, every game important reprise, but I, I, they are they are important. Keith, is it reprise or reprise? <laughs> Refrain. <laughs> Two and one to Cologne. <laughs> Cologne has struck out and sacrificed tonight. He takes his home run cut. He's trying to get on that Harvey Syndergaard bandwagon. This is letting it all hang out right there. What a rip. <laughs> Fouls were off. He just has fun in everything he does. You know what? He's become a good hitter. Remember in his first year, he couldn't bunt because he'd been in the American League forever. He's turned into a good bunter, even though he did fail to do one today. And he turned himself into a decent hitter. So that's seven hits. It's that one sharp. Live it right at Rojas. And Bart carries the bat with him and then peels off. Side retired. Even his outs are entertaining. Halfway through, 7 0 Mets.
his game again. Third straight start that he has been terrific and he got plenty of runs to work with early tonight. 20 straight scoreless innings for Bart. And he'll face the lower third of the order in the fifth. That's Real Muto, Rojas at the pitcher spot. JT Real Muto had a base hit his first time up. Four singles against Cologne tonight, no walks. No strikeouts in his last start. Cologne struck out nine, which uh, matched his season high. In, uh, in fact, the nine strikeouts matched the most that Bart has had in his last 177 appearances. And it was his first nine strikeout game as a 42 year old. How about this? After Nolan Ryan's 42nd birthday, he struck out nine or more 45 times. Well, he's the bar. How about that? I don't think Bart's going to be doing that. He'll settle for some quick outs, some quick innings, and just keeping on the way he's going right now. Going for number 13 tonight. To right center and Eric Young moves over. Well, Muto retired one away. Well, we came on the air talking about the uh, the biggest stories surrounding the Mets right now, and that is Matt Harvey and whether he is going to shut down his season at 180 innings. Matt addressed the media before the game tonight. I hired Scott, my agent, and um, went with Dr. Andrews as my surgeon because I trusted them to keep my career going and, and keep me healthy and um, you know as far as being out there being with my teammates and playing I'm never going to want to want to stop but um, as far as you know the surgeon and my agent having my back and, and kind of looking out for the best of my career um, you know they're obviously speaking their mind about that. I've been on the phone with Dr. Andrews. Uh, I've been on this phone with Scott, and you know, Dr. Andrews said his his limit was 180. Uh, that's what Scott has, or Dr. Andrews had said, and um, you know, but for me, I I don't. I got 166 innings. I don't know uh, any much more than what I have to do Tuesday, and that's go out and beat the Nationals. So that's what Matt had to say before the game. He never said definitively that he's going to shut down at 180. But what he did say is that he trusts his agent. He trusts his doctor. And um, it appears as though sometime in the last couple of weeks, Dr. Andrews through Scott Boris did communicate to the Mets that they considered 180 a hard cap. Now the Mets and again we're, we're operating only the information we have and we don't have all the facts as to who said what to whom when and, and what the plan was at what point. Gillespie the pinch hitter grounds went to a rebate and Flores turns the double play and we'll talk much more about the Matt Harvey situation when we come back. Five scoreless for Cologne he's up to 21 in a row.
two now. All year long Matt Harvey since spring training has been talking about how much he wants to pitch in October. Um, the Mets have felt as though there was a soft cap on Harvey's innings after consulting both with Dr. Andrews and, and Scott Boris Matt's agent before the season and they were figuring if they skipped another start they get him to about 190 195 during the season and then they would assess it as they went as far as his postseason innings were concerned and it's only within the last week to 10 days apparently that um, this idea was passed to the Mets that Dr. Andrews had set this 180 inning cap now um, from what we understand um, Sandy Alderson is rather furious about this. We asked Sandy, by the way, to come on tonight to address this from the Mets' perspective. He declined to do that. He has told reporters that he wants to talk to Matt face to face, which apparently won't happen until Monday in Washington before he says anything publicly. So that's where we are right now. Um, Matt has 166 innings this year, which means that if he were to stick to 180 inning cap, he basically have two more starts. Well, I don't know where the, the miscommunication started here. Um, you know, we got differing differing sides. You would think that something like this would have been etched in stone. Now, as a player, Gary, I'm speaking purely as a player. I am going to trust my agent and my my doctor, in Matt's case, surgeon, as to where I'm at and I'm going to go by their advice. I'm not going to trust management. Marvin Miller in the union fought for a second opinion. Gave for the right of a player to get a second opinion. There's a conflict of interest with team doctors. And it used to be in the old days which what the team orthopod said that was it. And, and you didn't have an opportunity to go outside. Well that was a good thing that Marvin did. So you know, Matt wants to pitch. What, come on, I mean, he's sitting there going, okay, I've got, I've worked my fanny off to get to the big leagues. I'm coming off of an injury that's very serious. And, you know, I could throw it and I, it could blow out and my career could be over. Now, granted, he's got three years to a, a, where he can cash in. Probably the only time he can cash in would be 29 years of age. It's his, it, it, it's his big uh, chance right there for a big long term contract. And he's getting pulled both ways, and I don't blame him. I know that he wants to pitch. You know, it, it's a tough situation here. Here's what Met fans don't understand, and frankly, I don't understand. How in the world yes. has this come to a head now in the first week in September? Um, Scott Boris made some comments today after Matt spoke about going to Dr. Andrews and talking about whether they can the size the limit find a way for him to continue pitching but what Morris also said was that he assumed that the Mets were going to handle Matt the way the Nationals handled Steven Strasburg three years ago that they just run him through 180 innings and shut him down that is so disingenuous because all season long as the Garrison's run down the line and he's going to try for two against Ichiro's strong arm not a good idea Nagaris gun down Ichiro's won 10 gold gloves, and one of the reasons is he's got a great arm, and Ligaris is thrown out easily for the first down. Well, nice play by Ichiro. We know he's a great defender, great arm, accurate arm, and there he's this full display. But I agree, a good good try by Ligaris. He got a six run lead. Anyway, talking about Boris's comments today, he, everybody knows that the Mets and Matt Harvey have been saying all year long that they were skipping him, that they were pushing his starts back with the express goal of getting him through the season and having him available to pitch in October. So to say now that he expected the Mets to shut Harvey down the way the Nationals shut down Strasburg, to me, comes off as completely disingenuous. And frankly, Matt all year long has been talking about how much he wants to pitch in October and he balked when the Mets went to a six man rotation. He balked when it was first talked about him skipping starts which meant that he was very committed to pitching through the season and into the postseason. So it just seems as though there's something going on here that we don't know about that has caused 
this to become a, a, a public disaster for the Mets and Matt Harvey. It is a it's Matt Harvey is the one's to get the brunt of this mm -hmm. and it's unnecessary pressure and outside interference that no athlete needs. So you would think that it would everything would have been etched in stone. It's a serious surgery. It's Tommy John surgery. Everybody had to be on the same page with Matt Harvey beginning in spring training. So um, I just don't understand why all of a sudden we have this. The only person who has not been heard from publicly as uh, Wright draws a walk is Dr. Andrews. Correct. Um, there was one reporter who apparently got in touch with Dr. Andrews and he basically said I, I'm not going to say anything publicly about this but it, it's clear that the message that that Scott felt as though he got from Dr. Andrews is the same message that Matt feels as though he got from Dr. Andrews that there is this idea of a hard 180 inning cap and that and this is where it gets lost in the translation whether Dr. Andrews just came up with that hard cap recently or whether he felt that way all along. But the fact of the matter is if the Mets felt as though that was a hard 180 inning cap they wouldn't have pitched him till the middle of May. They would have waited to start his season so that he would be available to get through the season. I mean everybody could do the math all along right. It's not as though this has suddenly become a, a math issue that nobody knew about. 166 is where it's at now. There's 28 games to go in the season. And at seven innings a start, 180 is two starts away. That's that's the reality of it. If if that was supposed to be the limit all year long, how could not everybody be on the same page all along? It just doesn't make any sense. So that's what this flies out for the second out. So the question is, with all of this uncertainty, how do the Mets and specifically Terry Collins, how does he Massage his pitching staff, keep his clubhouse from boiling over over this issue, and will it be enough of a distraction to get in the way of the Mets getting to the postseason, which they're trying to do for the first time in nine years? Well, one thing, Terry's a great communicator down in that clubhouse, and I think he's going to have to interact with the, a lot of the players and keep them focused on the job at hand, which is winning the division. Got, after tonight, what, 27 games left? Uh, as far as massaging uh, for Harvey, as far as innings pitch, they're going to skip him already. That was already in the plan and a six man rotation. Uh, obviously, in two starts, he's going to hit that wall of 180. Unless they move him to the bullpen. I mean, is that, could that be part of the solution? I mean, they've been hurting in the bullpen other than Clipper and Familia. Is that even. Is that even a, a possibility when you've got a guy coming back from Tommy John who's never relieved before and you, you worry about him getting ready quickly. I mean is that. Is that even a, in the conversation. Well, would, you, would you be a wonderful seventh inning guy wouldn't he right now it's something the Mets are looking for. Uh, but you don't know how he can warm up. You and, just don't and, know. And you worry about recurrence is that gonna, not being warm enough. Is that going to put more stress. Right. On his arm right. where he doesn't have the full time to get you know I wouldn't want to take that chance. No, I wouldn't Re think so. Re remember that. Matt Harvey all the starts this year has only had one time where he threw 110 pitches. They've been very very careful. With Matt this year as far as his uh, is his pitch count. Well one thing is for certain this issue is not going away quickly and uh, you'll hear much more about it until it's finally resolved and it's certainly not resolved now.
rolling Saturday night. We had a lot of rain here today. And thank goodness for the roof on this ballpark, or we would have been uh, severely rain delayed tonight. C certainly. But the evening has gotten much prettier. Could have been no BP for sure. Third time through the batting order for Bartolo Colon. D. Gordon slices one to left. On comes Cespedes uh, to make uh, the backhand catch. Second time he's picked off a line drive hit by Gordon tonight. He can play all three outfield positions. He is not. He's what a player. He just makes everything look so easy. He's a player. So one pitch, one out for Cologne in the sixth. And now Christian Yelich, who's twice grounded out to short tonight. Team Prado waits on deck. Bartolo at 21 straight scoreless innings and counting. Good changeup. Got Yelich way in front. It's 0 2. From a hitter's perspective, how in the world does Bartolo Colon keep doing this? Um, I look, and I know it looks easier up here in the center field camera, and everything looks in slow motion. And I'm up here, you know, you get in the box. He's what you'd call a comfortable 0 for 4, Gary. You would go up there and you'd say, "Boy, I had some good cuts," and you know what? You're you're 0 for 4. He's a master at changing speeds. That's one thing. He, he's smart. He knows who we can pitch inside to, who he has to be aware of. These are all years of experience that he's tucked away. There's that Cadillac again, by the way. Um, I think it was meant to be there this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, he puts a little here, a little extra there, a little takes off here, turns it over here. He knows exactly what he's doing, but when he's in trouble, he puts a little extra on that fastball. He knows what he's doing. Now, in this particular game, when he got the big lead right from the start, do you see him doing anything differently, or is it the same Cologne? Is he challenging hitters more because he's got the big lead? I don't see anything different. He recognizes who he who he can't let beat him. Yelich lines one the other way, and he's got his first hit of the night. Another single for the Marlins against Cologne. Their fifth of the night, making their sixth. Yeah, yeah, Yelich goes that way naturally. He's a good-looking young hitter. He just got to stay healthy. So here's Prado, who's one for two tonight. Prado's alone single was to the opposite field. I think at this stage of the game right now, the one thing that Bartolo doesn't want to do is give up a long ball that will get this team back in the game. He's got a seven run lead. Should be able to hold. He's not afraid to throw his fastball, too, Gary, and throw a strike. He's not pitching, uh, you know, out of the strike zone trying to get people to swing and miss. He's here. Put it in play. Got movement. Keep the ball on the ground. Popped up. Campbell comes down to call. Two out. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Nissan. Hurry in for holiday bonus cash on a 2015 Nissan. The event ends soon. Shop ChooseNissan.com. You're just joining us and saw Eric Campbell catch that pop up. You might wonder, what the heck? Well, Michael Kadire has tendonitis in his wrist. He's got that wrist in a splint right now, and the Mets really have no idea how long that injury might keep Kadire out of action. Justin Bohr. He's just keeping the ball away from Bohr the whole game. He wants to get it. There, ball. Oh. Behind the back flip, and he got him. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's so easy for Cologne right now that he's able to put some mustard on it. Oh my gosh. Look at the bag of tricks. This man will live forever. Like Bob Cousy. <laughs> it's almost as old as Cousy.
<laughs> He's smiling. He knew it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> This was out of some bag of tricks. Oh, he's smiling before he caught the ball, too. You know that. He knew he had him all the way. Yes, he knew he made the good throw. You'd think he practices this all the time, right? He's a piece of work. <laughs> Campbell couldn't help but smile. Everybody in that dugout was in stitches. Travis Darno leads off and flies one down the right field line. Long run for Ichiro into foul ground, and it lands out of play. Well, that, that'll loosen everybody up. <laughs> I always get the impression you know, it's exactly what he's doing out there, both in terms of his performance and his ability to provide entertainment. You know, on a night when this club maybe needs a little levity, he's right there to provide it. It's something else. Going to the Darno. Travis had a three run homer in the first inning that got the Mets the early lead and an RBI single in the second. Facing Eric Cordier, beginning his second inning of relief. Cordier is a very hard thrower who has kicked around a number of different organizations. And at age 29, is making just his 14th major league appearance. Had a brief stint with the Giants last year and now with Miami. Slider misses two and two. Cordier, Wisconsin native. Went to high school in Brussels, Wisconsin. So they would figure out to have good Belter models. There are no Flores and Campbell for the Mets in the seventh. Darno's been the big bat four RBIs three run homer in the first an RBI single in the second he continues to drive in runs and hit hit the other way and Gordon handles the hot smash and from a knee throws out Darno one away well, D Gordon may win himself a gold glove this year he's been terrific DJ LeMahieu in Colorado is the defending gold glove second baseman he didn't look so great when we were out there. No. I don't believe he has the range of Gordon. Didn't the Dodgers uh, kind of complain about Gordon's defense? Well, he was a shortstop and couldn't really handle shortstop, but he's been terrific since he got moved to second.
just 27 years old and looks like the Marlins have got themselves a gem. Second generation big leaguer. Why is it that the sons of pitchers always become position players? Can't figure that out. Adam LaRoche with the White Sox. Joe Negro's son uh, Lance was a third baseman. That's right. Hard to figure. Uh, Roger Clemens' son, isn't he uh, an infielder? Check swing grounder down to four. And Flores retired two away. So now Campbell will bat with two out of nobody. We were going through the uh, the Mets first base situation. The Dyer with that wrist. Daniel Murphy's got the quad and uh, he could probably pinch hit tonight. But I think the Mets are going to try and save him for Monday. So he's more 100 percent starting yes. that series in Washington. It's just it's the same quad that he pulled and lost 22 games in the season earlier. So it's would be categorized in my opinion as a. A second injury, which is something you've got to be very careful. And uh, the Mets may have Lucas due to sometime next week, probably not Monday, but sometime later in the week. If his back holds up, he was supposed to start a rehab assignment tonight. But uh, what do you make of Kadire's wrist injury? Uh, it's just so unfortunate because he was starting to hit. And, you know, it just stinks getting old in every regard. It just seems like it came out of nowhere. At least that's how he categorizes something he's never had to contend with before. All of a sudden, he couldn't close his hand. His wrist was uh, was so badly affected. Do we know which quad it is on Daniel? That's, that's hurt. Left. So even worse. Big Gordon handles the ground ball from Campbell. Cordier has a one-two-three inning. It's stretch time in Miami. Mets in Cologne with a 7 0 lead. Home seventh inning, Derek Dietrich leads off against Bartolo Colon. Colon now at 22 consecutive scoreless innings. If he gets through this one, he'll have a new career high. 22 and a third, the longest shutout string of his career. Dietrich skies one to right center. Plenty of room out there for Eric Young. And there's the first out. It's the best way to start your weekday. Do join Suki, Corey, Linda Church with the weather, and Caitlin Monty with all the traffic from 5 to 9 on the Pix 11 Morning News, where every story hits home.
Here's Ichiro. 0 for 2 tonight. Grounded into a double play. Bounce to third. Just keeps pounding the strikes, Gare. Doesn't mess around. Oh, he messed around the last inning. I once saw Mark Burley make a play like Cologne just made. But that was more urgent and Cologne's was more playful. One two to each row. Only 72 pitches through six and a third for Cologne tonight. Through 108 innings in his last start against the Phils. Ichiro slaps one to short. And Flores makes the play, two down. And Cologne just keeps rolling along like old man River. It was a uh, showboat, right? Lerner and Hello, I believe, were the songwriters and arrangers. So two on now JT Real Muto is one for two tonight single back in the third. One more out and he's got 23 straight scoreless Gary. That's his plan. Alone trying to beat the Marlins for the fourth time this year. His fifth start against them. The corner. The only Met pitcher to beat the Marlins more than three times in one season is R.A. Dickey, who beat him five times back in 2012. That of course, was R.A.'s Cy Young season when he won 20 games, and R.A.'s on one of those rolls now with the Blue Jays. Little did he know he was in the process of bringing to the Mets Nola Syndergaard and Travis Darno. Well, the way RA is going right now, he may be pitching against the Mets yeah. in late October. Who knows? One, two. Bounce foul. I mean, you could have potentially a Dickey Syndergaard matchup in a World Series. Guys who were traded for each other. Wouldn't that be something? They're going to the seventh now in DC. Nats seven, Braves nothing. So both the Mets and Nats with touchdown leads. One, two. Old foul. And Lenny Harris hops out of the way. It was good to see Lenny, who. Uh, very much like Cologne was often the life of the party when when he was a Met. That hat looks small on him. Helmet, I should say. Line in the left center, a base hit for Real Muto, and this one will go all the way back to the wall. First extra base hit of the night for the Marlins, a two-out double for Real Muto. His nice, second hit. Nice at bat. Fouled off a lot of pitches until he got one to his liking. Bullet. Well, that's the first extra base hit against Cologne in his last two starts. And now the number eight hitter, Miguel Rojas, who's one for two. Single for right his last time up. Casey McGee has come out on deck. He'll be a pinch hitter if Rojas keeps seeing it going. And that's seven runs, nine hits. The Marlins, no runs and seven hits. Well, does not walk or struck out a batter tonight. In fact, there have been only two strikeouts in this game, and I, I can't remember the last time we got to the seventh inning of a game in which there were only two strikeouts. 
Last the first two innings, one in the first and one in the second. And that's it. And both of those by the starter Brad Hand, who lasted just an inning and two thirds tonight, got knocked out. His ERA got ignited. Two and one to Rojas. 88 pitches for Bartolo. No, oh, 82. Excuse me. This is very economic. Nine possible. Well, that's what he said his last time. He had to settle for eight. Two one coming. Fouled off the leg of Rojas. But remember, the Mets are going to be going to a six man rotation. Steven Matz comes back to make his third big league start tomorrow. And from there, the Mets should roll out six. From, uh, from then to the end of the season, at least that's the plan right now. And don't forget the Mets used six bullpen relievers last night, extra inning ball game, 11 inning game, a day game tomorrow. So if Bartolo could continue putting the ball in play, I think if he's under 100 pitches, Gary's going nine. Here's Mr. Matz. Looking forward to his start. I have not seen him. I, I missed the first two starts. I did not work those games. 2 2 coming. Struck him out with a slider. Cologne's first strikeout of the night ends the seventh. He's got a career high 23 consecutive scoreless innings. following Verizon Fios pregame at 6.30. The march to the playoffs continues right here on New York's home for baseball. Picks 11. Well, this is Rodell Lazo set to make his major league debut for the Marlins. I'm looking for him in the book. I don't see him. I don't think he's in there, Keith. Well, Bartolo Colon set to take a turn at bat. Good. In the top of the eighth. He should be uh, with plenty of gas left in the tank. He it's gets seven pretty easy innings for him. If he gets the win tonight, Gary, he takes over sole possession of the pitching staff of most wins at 13. Led the team last year with 15. Lazo is 26 years old. He's been in the Marlins system since 2012, a Cuban defector. Getting his big league debut tonight. He pitched both at single A and double A in the Miami system this year, 26 games in all. And the first man he'll face in the major leagues is Eric Young, who was in the lineup tonight to give the Mets an all right hand hitting lineup against the starter Brad Hand. That worked out. The Mets scored seven runs against Hand in an inning and two thirds. Young has been hit by a pitch, flyed out, and grounded out. 
That's seven runs, nine hits. The Marlins, no runs and seven hits as we start the eighth. Lazo's first pitch driven out to left center field and back goes Yelich to make the catch. One hard hit ball by Young, one out to start the eighth. And what can Bartolo Colon do for an encore? He's pitched seven scoreless innings. He's made a wonderfully creative defensive play, and he may be running for office. Yes. El Presidente. Well, most importantly, he's given his bullpen a rest, and his offense gave him help early, and he has been brilliant. A game the Mets needed to bounce back from a tough loss last night. And he appears to be in no swing mode, resting up for the bottom of the eighth. And strike three call. So that's all Cologne's going to do this turn at bat. But let's show what he did in the field to play the game brought to you by your Tri State Ford dealer. A little backhand behind the back. Guy Rogers. <laughs> for you kids that don't know who Guy Rogers is, he was the point guard for the San Francisco Warriors when I was a kid growing up who was famous for his behind the back passes. You remember Guy Rogers? I do. But Bob Cousy was the first. Bob, Bob, okay, Cousy was superb. Celtics. So I remember that Warriors uh, offense. They had Guy Rogers was point guard. Al Adels was defensive specialist at the other guard. Thomas Sherry was the six-five power forward. Nate Thurman broke in and played forward. Wound up being a great center for the Warriors because Will Chamberlain was the center. Philadelphia Warriors. Oh no! Well, actually, they were San Francisco because I went and saw Will play many so games. Will played for the San Francisco yes, Warriors did. before he went to the Sixers. Yes, he did. Really? I remember uh, asking him for an autograph after a game, and I was came up to his felt like came up to his knee. Well, so did everybody. Look, <laughs> <laughs> hits one out to right, and Ichiro is there to grab it. So Rodell Lazo's first. Inning of the big leagues is a 1 2 3 affair, and Cologne will go back to the mound for the bottom of the eighth with a 7 0 lead. How it was this afternoon? The thunderstorms were all over the place.
Pinch hitter Casey McGee lines the first pitch in the bottom of the eighth. Eric Young who comes over to snag it. One pitch and one out for Cologne in the eighth inning. That's the playoff picture brought to you by Optimum Wi Fi. These are the five teams who would be in the postseason from the National League if the season ended today. And of the five, the Mets have done more beating up of the lower teams and less winning against the better teams. What that means, I have no idea. But if the uh, if the season ended today, the Mets would be playing the Dodgers in the National League Division Series. D. Gordon fouls off the first offering. Yeah, it would be the two centrals. It looks like uh, Cubs and Pirates would play the single game, wild card, and then it would take on the Cardinals. Cardinals. Gordon has hit three line drives to the outfield, all caught. And he slaps that one over the bag, a base hit. Chased quickly by Cespedes, who holds Gordon to a single. So we've seen a lot of spraying of the baseball from this lineup, this Marlin lineup. They got a lot of nice table setters for, for uh, Giancarlo Stamp. He can just stay in the lineup. Stamp has been out two and a half months now with a broken hamate bone. Played one game on rehab, then had to shut it down because his hand was still sore. So it doesn't look like he is getting close to coming back. Meanwhile, Lucas Duda made his first uh, rehab start tonight. Went two for three down in St. Lucie. So that's a good sign for him. Coming back from back problems. Christian Yelich, one for three. And he takes a strike, one and one. Only 74 games. He's been out for two and a half months and he's still in the top five of the league in home runs. <laughs> Give you an idea just the kind of start he was off. Look at the RBIs to games. He would have been on a pace for 130. Line to short, caught by Flores, and he'll double up Gordon to retire the side. Flores picked it off before it hit the ground. And that gets Cologne through yet another scoreless inning, his 24th in a row. And maybe he will go nine. Do it. Two innings back to back home runs by Darno and Flores. Lagaris had a two run homer in the second, and the Mets were off and running. And Bartolo Colon has done the rest with eight scoreless innings tonight. And there is your line score. He's been pretty good, hasn't he? I'd say so. 24 straight scoreless innings. Meanwhile, the Marlins will go deeper into their bullpen and bring in Jose Ureña. 11 games, a lot of these guys late, late recalls. 
49 innings pitched in 11 games. Yeah, he made nine He's starts for the them start, yeah. earlier this year. And the ERA is not too uh, impressive. David Wright will lead off to the Mets in the top of the ninth. Marlins have gotten good relief pitching tonight after Brad Hand got stung early. Andre Rienzo went three and a third, no runs, two hits. Eric Cordier, two innings, no runs, one hit. Uh, Raudel Lazo in his big league debut, a one, two, three inning. David has two hits and a walk tonight, two for three. It'll be right Cespedes and Uribe for the Mets. And there does not appear to be anybody throwing at the moment in the Mets bullpen. So perhaps, Good. perhaps Bartolo Colon will get a crack at being the first Met this season to throw a complete game. Lead the way, Bartolo. David pulls one down to third, and Prado's got it. One out. Let us check out the National League scoreboard brought to you by Ram, doubleheader in Cincinnati. Oh joy. Oh. Brewers won the day game and lead the night game. Cubs got great pitching from Jake Arietta as they beat the Diamondbacks. 18 wins for Arietta. Cardinals even up their series with the Pirates behind Jaime Garcia, who threw seven scoreless. Braves uh, are about to lose their 11th in a row. And the Giants trying to snap a seven game losing streak, lead the Rockies 2 1 in the fourth. Yuenis Cespedes, one for three in a walk tonight. He scored two runs, which gives him 89 runs scored for the season. That includes his whole season. <laughs> Juan Arribe on deck. Marlins will have their three, four, and five hitters. Prado, Bohr, and Dietrich coming up. In the bottom of the ninth. Bartolo Colon has 12 career shutouts among his 35 career complete games, but he has not had a shutout or complete game since 2013 when he was with Oakland. But it looks as though he's going to get a crack at it tonight. And the only shame of it. Is that he's on the road and will not get the standing ovation going to the mound for the ninth, which he would have gotten at City Field. Sharply hit, but right at Rojas. And Cespedes is retired, two out. That's 10 in a row retired by the Marlins bullpen. Officially, Cologne is at 89 pitches through eight innings. Reason for him not to finish tonight. Well, he's only got the one strikeout. Everything's been put in play. He's got got one, two double play, three double plays. Of his 12 career shutouts, he's never had a shutout where he's only struck out one. Two is his uh, his career low in his shutout. The Mets coming into the day were one of four teams that had not had a complete game this year. Complete games are rare, but they're not extinct. There were a couple of them in the American League yesterday. Josh Tomlin threw a complete game for Cleveland. John Danks threw one for the White Sox. Of course, it's easier in the American League when you never have to pinch hit for your pitcher. Off the corner, three and one to a rebound. That struck early here. Seven runs in the first two innings, and an all Bartolo ever since. Off the pitcher's leg, Rainier tries to find it. And he recovers in time to throw out Uribe. Urania gets Uribe. Open. Open. Bartolo Cologne tries to become the first men to complete what he started this year.
things in his age 42 season tries to do something no other Met has done this year and that is throw a complete game Wilmer Flores moves to second base Ruben Tejada comes in to play short to shore up the defense. Long has thrown 89 pitches or is it 90. The one source that says 89 our screen says 90 we'll go with our screen. Martin Prado leads off and bounces the first pitch right to Flores one pitch for Colon and one out at the bottom of the ninth. Well, if they're going to make it that easy. Well, they're down seven runs. Go ahead and swing. We like it. Going for 25 scoreless gear. And a W that will give him his 13th victory and it will take over the team lead and wins. The last time a Met threw a complete game, it was in this ballpark. June 19th of last year, Zach Wheeler. Through a one nothing shutout against the Marlins. And now a year and nearly three months later Bartolo Colon trying to shut out the Marlins again. Justin Bohr is two for three. It was against Bohr that Colon made that. Startling play with his behind the back flip to first base that he found. Quite comical and so did everybody else in that Mets dugout. Quickly ahead 0 and 2 on Bohr. Strike three call. Second strike out of the ninth for Cologne. Two down in the ninth. And Derek Dietrich, the final hope for the Marlins. Dietrich's been up three times, flying out all three. Cologne has given up eight hits tonight. But only once has he given up more than one hit in an inning. He hasn't walked about it. Struck out two. Dietrich first pitch swinging fouls back a 92 mile an hour fastball. 92 for a 42 year old guy with two out in the ninth. Gotta love it. I think Met fans might share that sentiment. On a night when the Mets needed somebody to change the subject. Bartolo Colon has done an excellent job of it. Strike two. And now he's one strike away. Line base hit. Nitra keeps it going to the Marlins. Their ninth hit of the night. Cologne backing up. Again, another opposite field hit. Nice hitting by the youngster. Dietrich. So still one more out to get for Cologne. And he'll try and get his fellow old warhorse, Ichiro Suzuki, who's gone 0 for 3 tonight. 42 year old Cologne against the 41 year old Ichiro. Dietrich at first and two out. Cologne falls behind 2 0. JT Rail Muto would be next. Ichiro pops it up. Floor is out. Ligaris in. And who caught it? Somebody did, and the ball game is over. Flores. Bartolo Colon throws the first complete game for the Mets this season. His 13th career shutout. 25 consecutive scoreless innings for the 42 year old wonder as the Mets even up the series with the Marlins with a 7 0 win. Well, the Just best. what the doctor ordered. Oh, boy. The veteran comes through in shining colors. 13th win of the year now going 13 and 11 more importantly the Mets maintain five game lead over the Nationals it looks like they're going to win tonight.
15 games over 500. The Mets strike early with four runs. Hit three home runs in the first two innings. Tenth by Darno, a three-run shot. He had four RBI on the night. Flores hit his 15th. Lagares his sixth. Terry Collins loaded his lineup with right-hand batters, but the only one he needed was Bartolo Colon, who did the job tonight with a complete game, nine-hit shutout, 13th career shutout for Colon. Mets' first complete game since June of last season. Home runs early from Darno and Flores and Lagares, and the Mets back to 15 games over 500 as Colon writes quite a tale. 25 consecutive scoreless innings, a new career high for the ageless wonder. Game summary brought to you by Verizon Files. Now there's a totally new way to customize your TV only from Verizon Files. Mets and Cologne celebrate a 7-0 win. More from Miami coming right up.